guys. <laughs> uh, short intro, I'll do a bit of commentary at the end, uh, which uh, some people can miss out if they're not interested. But I'm just going to do a revisited cheat on uh, an oil pot that I made for Keith Fenner's What's In Your Box. I think it was two years, three years ago. Uh, it finished up at, uh, with uh, Emma, I think, Emma's uh, spare room machine shop. So uh, it found a good home. Anyway, I'm going to put this together, fairly condensed, a bit of voiceover, and so it's a refresher. People may have seen it before, but it's just a case of getting some video out instead of nothing. And I say I'll put a commentary at the end. All right, so let's get on with it. Well, in the absence of any uh, thick walled aluminum tube, we're going to use this uh, two and a quarter diameter 6061, which was kindly sent to me long ago by Bill Lewis. Uh, it's going to be a bit of cleaning up, a lot of boring out, and it's going to finish up probably just under the two and a quarter. To close off the uh, bottom later when we've bought it out, I've got this uh, slug of aluminum which was spare from another job and should do quite nicely. Having uh, touched off on this piece, uh, the next thing is just to clean it up on the outside. So we're only taking a fairly small amount off enough to get a reasonable finish and then on the bottom there we might see there's uh, a centre marked out which is actually to correspond with a piece of tube which I've got spare which is 7 8 diameter and that's going to go down through the middle of the pot when we get to that first thing here is turning down the what will be the top of the pot to make a neck which will eventually receive the tube that will go down inside put a center in there for a little bit of extra stability try and avoid any uh, chatter occurring gradually working down to diameter now starting off some drilling uh, we're going to have to bore out the neck here for the tube to go in but in fact we're going to go all the way down and bore right through which will give us a start for boring the uh, main body and uh, having got started with that size we're going to go up to there's the tube that we're going to use again. We're going to increase the drill size, get up to, I think, about three quarter there. And as mentioned, we're down on back gear. Take it steady. It takes a while to uh, get through to depth on this. gradually boring out the neck here and this is going to go towards slightly undersized for the time being for the uh, tube the top of which it's intended to be a light interference fit when we put it in there checking size <laughs> fiddly with a telescope gauge sometimes and then offering the tube up to see it's getting very very close and the tube itself has got to be cleaned up so we'll probably leave it at that size for the time being and work from there I've cleaned the tube up a bit and uh, checking for length it's a bit too long take about half an inch off so that it can go to the bottom of the pot or almost 
and uh, to make sure the oil can flow we're going to put some notches in the bottom Now the next job is to set up that slug so we can turn it. Um, it's awkward for putting in the chuck itself so I'm going to use C8 Lou chucking method. This is the spare end of that uh, two and a quarter chunk. Just put some grooves in it, cleaned it up and then get some thick CA spread over the face. The slug's been cleaned up and we've got a center, a center uh, spot in it. So we'll use the tail stop to apply pressure and uh, wait for the glue to cure, at which point we can start turning it down and uh, prepping it. After the glue had had a chance to cure, we could get on with turning the slug down. The idea with this is to turn it down to an adequate size, such that uh, the recess in the base can be bored out to suit. You can see the wall thickness of the pot is getting pretty thick, wanting to keep some weight in it. And having got a finishing cut on that, check the measurement so we can note that in readiness later for uh, boring out to make a socket for it. Well, I've turned the piece around in the chuck, so this is now going to be the bottom. Just face it off to tidy it up. There's a lot of boring to do. At that stage, I think there's been a small start made with a small boring bar, just to get a start on it and then move up in size, take slightly bigger cuts. And in order to break the chips, the uh, feed was briefly interrupted a few times on the way through. We're going full depth here all the way through, about as far as the top neck. So this is boring out the body of the unit. A near finished size for the ball which is not in itself super critical. You can see the wall thickness is just pretty generous again keeping plenty of weight. Looking inside a little bit of tidy up needed at the top end but that's not super critical. And then take a finishing cut. Not really in itself very important considering nobody's going to see inside it, but I guess it's habit very often. Take a finishing cut. And that basically is about as far as we'll go. And then we've got to bore out to make a pocket for the uh, base slug. started cutting the relief with this uh, very short HSS boring bar. Checking size, see where we're at. Then actually changed over to another boring bar, a very old one, actually one of my favorites. <laughs> I've had it forever. And uh, keep removing material getting closer to what we need 
And having got the diameter more or less uh, as required, we then got to just clean up or take a finishing cut and clean up the base. Make sure that's uh, uh, square and uh, clean. The turned down slug is still attached to the uh, temporary chucking piece. We'll try it for size. It's actually a bit looser than intended. Probably made that diameter about a thou oversized, which was not intended. I had thought I'd make it almost a light press fit, but <laughs> didn't quite work out. Now I've unglued, heated the slug up, taken it out. Let's check that again. It's not too bad, but not quite as tight a fit as I would have liked. Time now to install the base piece. Plenty of uh, permanent Loctite. Pressure applied from the tailstock and then leave it to cure. Now because the fit was not quite as good as I'd intended and despite the fact that we've got Loctite I decided to put three little pins in as a an extra. So what we're doing here is drilling the first of three. Uh, two millimeter drill and I'm using some two millimeter aluminum rivets which have had the heads cut off using those as pins you can see one I think there's one two and three and uh, those will just have to be cleaned off and of course we've got to turn down the base here as well to finish that flush with the body careful setup should uh, allow removal of the uh, protruding pins. Now there's quite a bit of material left to remove so most of this is just hogging it off any old how. Let's get rid of the spare material. Could have actually made the uh, rebate a bit deeper but Anyway, we're getting close to uh, final cut and get rid of a lot of chips again. <laughs> the chips just keep building up. Uh, final cut should just about do it. Slow and steady, fairly light cut. That should do. Now to clean off these uh, pin excesses. So we set up very carefully with a cross slide stop so we can just work our way down without disturbing the previous finish. And that comes out fairly well. and actually see where the pins were, which is good. And uh, we haven't disturbed the original finish. So the trick more or less worked, I think we can say. <laughs> now, finally, just put a chamfer on the uh, edge here, finish it off. Brought this out of the chuck a little bit, started some polishing, and uh, worked through some abrasive paper. Go down in grits and then uh, progress to ultimately some uh, polishing compound. It takes quite a while to get a decent finish, and in fact, this is only a preliminary polish really. This is uh, Scotch-Brite with 
compound and then clean off. It's cleaning up fairly well. But of course, even when you've got a polish on it, finger marks still show. But uh, for the time being, that's reasonable. So we've got to turn it round. Now a bit of polishing on this end. Try and get it up to a reasonable finish. As I said, the whole thing will actually have to be polished as a, as a unit to avoid the uh, marks you get working on one area after another. You can see the difference. But it does gradually come up fairly well. So we've got to think about the tube next. Although the tube may not go quite to the bottom of the pot, it still seems wise to put some notches in to make sure that the uh, oil can flow well between the main area and the inside of the tube. Just a uh, quarter milling cutter take some light cuts just to get a notch done three times time to get the tube in and uh, this end of the tube is slightly plus so that it's a very light interference fit and the mark you can see there is my limit so the tubes actually very close to the bottom, probably not quite touching. And uh, remove the excess, clean things up. Just clean things up a bit, get rid of that, and uh, take a final cut to finish off nicely. Can't see the join. I don't think <laughs> so. And then a bit of chamfer. Just tidy that up, a light touch there. A little bit more on the outside. And that's the neck more or less done. So that's the pot itself complete, except for a bit more polishing. You can see where the two areas don't quite match, but that's easily blended out. It takes two or three efforts actually to really get the finish that is required, but overall, not too bad. Might just about see inside, doesn't show very much. I decided to make a loose fitting cap and this is a piece of, uh, what is it, 35mm, uh, not quite scrap, but it's got a very rough end from being hacksawed long ago. So the first thing was to clean that up. And then uh, take some cuts down the side clean the exterior brought this out of the chuck a little bit take a fairly fine light cut clean up the outside it's not too bad then we got to think about uh, boring it out so it's more boring yet again Drilled it out, of course, and uh, now using the the old favourite boring bar. It's quite a bit of material to come out. Got a depth stop set this time, so we don't go too far in. Keep plugging away at it. Like I said before, boring, boring. No need to see all of that. 
So we're more or less taking it up to where it will be a, an easy fit on the neck of the oil pot. Too tight and it would possibly gall. So taking it fairly carefully, I want to finish up about a thou or two oversize. Now let's see if it fits. Yeah, that's not too bad. As I said before, it's not meant to be a tight fitting cap. It's purely something you can put on to cover the neck if you want to stop muck going in, i.e. chips. <laughs> so put a little chamfer on there, finish it off. And uh, now we've got to cut that off instead of parting, which, because it's uh, full depth, actually took it out to the bandsaw and cut it off that way, which is really a bit quicker. Now I need to face this off. Being a bandsaw cut, of course, it's not 100% square, very rarely is, but uh, needs finished off anyway. Take a couple of passes. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, not too bad. Um, what do we need to do now? We've got to put a bit of chamfer on that. There we go. Magic chamfer. And polish it up a little bit. Just on the end anyway. Polish the rest in a little while. Finish it off. Yeah, not too bad. Now as a slight afterthought, decided a bit of knurl would be useful at the top of the cap. So set up the uh, homemade knurler and the cap is pressed on to a piece of, a piece of spare material that was turned down slightly and wrapped in painter's tape and pushed it on with some difficulty so it should hold. And uh, then using the uh, spindle handle Gradually add some knurl. It's basically only the width of the rollers, but that was thought to be probably adequate anyway. Blot off some of the oil, clean things up a little bit, and uh, the knurl came out fairly well. Wasn't very critical. But of course, having done that, uh, we really now need to consider the rest of the cap. So we're going to take a couple of passes to reduce the diameter slightly so that the knurl has a slightly greater diameter and looks better. One pass just to clean up a bit. And then we'll take a second pass so that way we can feed in next to the knurl which will put a slight chamfer on the lower part of the knurl so there it is pretty simple just a means of having something to put on the neck of the pot and uh, keep crud from getting in when needed. Someone actually mentioned shouldn't you have a bleed hole to let the air out when you're putting oil in which is probably a val valid point. However Mr Bozo visited and uh, I went ahead and drilled where I thought it was adequate but uh, it wasn't. I was drilling into the side wall, having left it very thick. <laughs> so I didn't really 
think that out, therefore I drilled a second hole further in. A pity really, it's now got two holes in it, and to be honest I can't remember whether I put in a small pin to disguise the first one. I may have done, I can't remember because the pot's gone now. Oh well. Ah, uh, final look, there you are, two holes. Stupid man. Stupid man. Anyway, as I say, I forget whether I put another of my little pins in there and uh, cleaned it up. Totally forget. But it hasn't come out too bad and having kept it very thick walled, it's nice and heavy. And the cap goes on quite nicely. I thought of putting a hole in the top of the cap for a, a brush to go through, but I think that's something that the uh, new owner can do later if they want. So job finished. Well there we are, hopefully a little bit of interest. At least a chance to get a video out even if it's another cheat. I have been out here occasionally. Sometimes it's too damn hot. Now it's getting colder by the day virtually. Uh, but the main problem is still the same old one and it only gets worse. The uh, back problem. Don't want to belabor it too much. Nobody wants to hear about health issues very much, but I thought I'd bring you up to speed. Uh, some days I am a bit better, but more often than not, uh, it just gets too much, which is very frustrating. I do quite a bit of cooking, actually, and even that, standing by the stove. <laughs> After a while, it just gets ridiculous. But anyway, I'm still around. I haven't uh, donated myself to worm food yet. Had one or two other health issues which I'm just sort of filling you in on, but uh, I had a check up and found I've got a pretty big polyp in the lower gut. It turned out it was cancerous on the outside, and thank heaven when it was checked and followed by a CT scan uh, to check further turned out, knock on wood, that it was okay. So I, I think I may have dodged a bullet. Also turns out I've got an aortic aneurysm, which is not the dissecting type, it's the ascending aorta, which is a big vessel anyway. Uh, probably been with me for years. Maybe it'll carry on for a bit longer. <laughs> Give the old man a bit more time. So that's about it really as a sort of ending commentary. Uh, I don't give up entirely on doing a new video. I've got still several ideas but most of them are a bit long-winded. In other words, well it's partly because I waffle a lot. I've hopefully cut out a lot of waffle in this cheat. But um, the amount of time involved to do one or two of the projects is such that I know damn well I can't do an awful lot because of the standing. I can do quite a bit sitting at the mill, but in the end, however much you try, you still finish up having to stand. It's all down to weight bearing. Uh, even now sitting on a stool, it's uh, not very nice. <laughs> anyway, if you got this far, thank you very much. It's probably two months at least since I put out the last cheat. Um, so it's just a way of staying in touch, saying hello to all the folks who kindly followed me over the years and uh, I'll hopefully still be around a bit longer <laughs> whether it's this sort of you know shop stuff I don't know uh, anyway good to see everybody I'm still following a lot of my usual favorite channels good to see what's going on take care of yourselves catch you another time bye for now